and gentlemen and welcome to this morning's press briefing on behalf of the governor and the management of the bank i want to thank you the press for the partnership and the crucial role you played in helping the bank to inform the ghanaian people about the bank's monetary policy decisions this morning's press briefing follows the meetings of the monetary policy committee last week and this morning the chairman of the committee will speak to us on the decisions of the committee We'll give you the press an opportunity to ask questions at the end of the chairman's presentation. We're live on the Bank of Ghana website, bog.gov.gh, on Facebook at the Bank of Ghana, and on the Bank of Ghana YouTube channel, Bank of Ghana. It's time to listen to the chairman. I respectfully invite the chairman of MPC and governor of Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ennis Addison, to deliver his statement. Shall we welcome him in a big round of applause? It's good to see you all in the new year, 2024. I see Dr. Edusa Kodia. This is your first time attending these MPC meetings. So you're welcome. And a good old friend, an old tour as usual. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen of the media, and welcome to the press briefing for the 116th Monetary Policy Committee meetings, the first for the year. Last week, the committee deliberated on global and domestic macroeconomic developments, including assessment of the performance of the economy and the risks to the outlook for inflation. A summary of the assessments and key considerations that informed the committee's decision on the positioning of the monetary policy rate is as follows. Global economic activity was mixed in 2023, improving in the first half of the year, but moderated in the second half. The mixed performance on one hand reflected strong growth in the United States amid solid domestic demand and resilient labor markets, despite tighter financing conditions. On the other hand, the contraction in Japan, the Euro area, and the United Kingdom was observed. For emerging market and developing economies, growth was supported mainly by the rebound in China, where policy support and resurgence in consumer spending offset weakness in the property sector. The overall growth outturn for 2023 is expected to remain subdued, weighed down by the lingering weakness in the manufacturing sector alongside effects of the still tight monetary policies and weak external demand. Given these developments, global growth is projected to end 2023 at 3% and slow marginally to 2.9% in 2024. Global inflationary pressures have eased substantially, largely supported by the decline in energy and food prices. Consequently, headline inflation is on a downward trajectory, though above targets in many advanced economies and EMDEs due to persistence in core inflation. Longer term inflation expectations remain anchored reflecting the tightened policy stance of central banks and recent declines in headline inflation. In the outlook, the expectation is for continued gradual disinflation as the effects of the maintenance of tighter monetary policy stance passes through to core inflation. Notwithstanding the pause in policy rate hikes by central banks in advanced economies, Lagged effects of previous policy tightening measures continue to transmit to global financing conditions. Longer term bond yields retreated slightly in line with shifting expectations about the path of future interest rates. Also, lending standards have tightened and bank credit growth has slowed sharply, while equity markets recovered 
amid the expectation that central banks in advanced economies have reached the peak of the tightening cycle. Portfolio flows to emerging markets rebounded strongly in the last two months of 2023, supported by expectations that the U.S. Fed will cut policy rate in the near term. At home, there is a gradual recovery in economic activity, though growth remains below potential. The latest Ghana Statistical Service data showed an expansion in overall real GDP by an annual rate of 2%, driven by the services and agriculture sectors during the third quarter of 2023, relative to 2.7% over the same period in 2022. Non-oil GDP growth moderated to 2.1% from 3.3% over the same comparative period. The bank's high-frequency real sector indicators point to a significant pickup in economic activity. The updated composite index of economic activity rebounded strongly with an annual growth of 9.6% in November, the highest in two years, from a contraction of 6.2% a year earlier. Domestic VAT, port activity, industrial consumption of electricity, imports, and tourist arrivals all contributed to the improvement in the economic activity observed during the period. The bank's latest surveys conducted in December 2023 showed a strong rebound in both consumer and business sentiments, reflective of the signs of recovery. Consumer confidence improved on account of easing inflation pressures, which led to optimism about future economic conditions. Similarly, business confidence increased significantly, signaling improving consumer demand as firms met short-term targets and expressed positive sentiments about company and industry prospects. The survey findings were broadly aligned with observed trends in Ghana's Purchasing Managers Index, which improved to 51.8 in December 2023 from 51.6 in the previous month. The disinflation process, which began earlier in the year, continued through to the last quarter of the year, supported by strong policies relative exchange rate stability, and effective liquidity sterilization efforts. Headline inflation sharply decelerated to 23.2% in December 2023 from a peak of 54.1% at the end of December 2022. The decline in inflation was driven by both easing food and non-food prices. Food inflation decelerated sharply to 28.7% percent in December 2023 from 59.7 in December 2022, while non-food inflation also fell to 18.7 percent from 49.9 percent over the same comparative period. Core inflation has also eased significantly, affirming broad decline in prices. The bank's core inflation measure, which excludes energy and utility more than halved, to 24.2% in December 2023, down from 53.2% in December 2022. Similarly, inflation expectations by the banking sector, businesses, and consumers have all declined. Fiscal policy implementation was broadly aligned with requirements under the IMF ECF supported program. Provisional data shows that the performance criteria targets on the primary fiscal balance on a commitment basis, non-accumulation of external debt payment arrears, no new collateralized debt by central government and public entities, all of which are broadly on course for attainment. Fiscal performance based on the provisional banking data on budget execution from January to December 2023 shows a deficit of around 3% of GDP against the target of 5.5% of GDP. 
base money growth slowed down significantly in the course of 2023 and was supportive of the disinflation process. Growth in reserve money defined to include currency outside banks and commercial bank reserves slowed down significantly to 29.2% by end December 2023 relative to the growth rate of 57.5% observed in December 2022. A sharp slowdown was triggered in large parts by strong sterilization efforts and effective liquidity management operations. With a tight monetary policy stance and increased risk aversion of banks due to rising credit risks, private sector credit expansion broadly remained sluggish in the year. In December 2023, the pace of growth in private sector credit slowed to 10.7% compared to 31.8% annual growth in December 2022. In real terms, credit to the private sector contracted by 10.2% relative to a 14.5% contraction recorded over the same comparative period. On the money market, interest rates broadly trended downward at the end of the at the short end of the yield curve. The 91-day, 182-day Treasury bill rates decreased to 29.49% and 31.7% respectively in December 2023, from 35.8% and 36.23% respectively in the corresponding period of 2022. Similarly, the rate on the 364-day instrument decreased to 32.97% in December 2023 from 36.06% in December 2022. The interbank weighted average rate remained well aligned within the policy corridor by the end of 2023. The weighted average rate increased to 30.19% in December 2023 from 25.51% in December 2022, in line with the monetary policy rate and supported by adjustments made in the cash reserve ratio. The average lending rates of banks eased marginally to 33.75% in December 2023 from 35.58% a year earlier. The banking sector's performance improved as adverse spillovers from the domestic debt restructuring and macroeconomic challenges receded. As at end 2023, the data shows that the banking sector remains stable, liquid, and profitable. Profitability improved for the sector from the loss position recorded in the 2022 audited accounts, reflecting sustained increases in net interest income and fees and commissions. The industry's balance sheet was generally strong, underscored by increased assets, funded largely by deposits. Key financial soundness indicators remained broadly positive, with the capital adequacy ratio adjusted for reliefs above the regulatory minimum, while liquidity and profitability ratios were higher in December 2023 compared with the same period last year. The non-performing loan ratio, however, increased in 2023 because of general repayment challenges on the part of borrowers, reflecting the impact of the general macroeconomic challenges encountered in 2022. The latest stress test indicates that the sector remains stable on the back of the ongoing recapitalization process by shareholders alongside support from the Ghana Financial Stability Fund. On the international markets, prices for the key export commodities traded mixed in 2023. On a year-on-year -year basis, crude oil prices declined by 5% to an average of 77.3 US dollars per barrel in December 2023 due to sluggish energy demand in the United States and China, and easing concerns on earlier perceptions that tensions in the Red Sea would disrupt supplies. Cocoa prices, on the other hand, extended its gains 
with an annual growth of 66.8% to close at an average of 4,235.6 US dollars per ton on the back of reduced supplies. Spot prices for gold also gained 13.3% to close at an average price of 2,035.43 US dollars per fine ounce in December 2023, benefiting from the weakened dollar and falling bond yields of the US economic data fueled expectations of interest rate cuts in the near term. Developments in the prices of the major export commodities, together with lower production levels in cocoa and crude oil, led to a marginal decline in the trade balance. The trade account recorded a surplus of 2.63 billion US dollars for 2023, lower than a surplus of 2.87 billion US dollars recorded in 2022. This decline in the trade surplus was attributed to a greater decline in export earnings relative to imports. In the year, merchandise exports declined by 4.9 percent to 16.6 billion US dollars. Gold exports increased by 15 percent to 7.6 billion US dollars, benefiting from both volume and price increases. Cocoa bean exports fell marginally by 1.1 percent to 1.3 billion US dollars on the back of lower volumes and price. Crude oil exports decreased significantly by 29.3% to 3.8 billion US dollars, driven by reduced volumes and lower prices. Other exports, including non-traditional exports, also decreased slightly by 1.9% to an estimated value of 3.1 billion US dollars. On the import side, payments were lower by 4.2% to 14 billion US dollars driven by both non-oil imports and oil and gas imports. Non-oil imports were estimated at 9.5 billion US dollars, down by 4.6%. Oil and gas imports also decreased by 3.3% to 4.5 billion US dollars. Gross international reserves, excluding pledged assets and petroleum funds, reflected a significant build-up of 2.2 billion US dollars at the end of December 2023 to stand at 3.7 billion US dollars. The build-up was driven mainly by the Gold for Reserves program and unwinding of short-term liabilities. However, the stock of gross international reserves ended the year at 5.9 billion US dollars, enough to cover 2.7 months of imports of goods and services from the stock position of 6.3 billion US dollars at the end of December 2022. The volatilities that characterized the foreign exchange market in January 2023 dissipated and the Ghana city remained relatively stable throughout the rest of the year. The stability in the foreign exchange market hinged on improved inflows from the IMF ECF first tranche the domestic gold purchase program, remittances, and foreign exchange purchases for mining and oil companies amid monetary policy tightening. These were further supported by the release of the Cocoa Board Loan Facility in December 2023. Excluding the sharp depreciation of 20.6% in January, the city cumulatively depreciated by 7.2% against the US dollar between February and December 2023. Summary and outlook. Overall, the committee noted that global growth had remained relatively subdued in 2023, while the ease in global inflation had triggered a pause in monetary policy tightening across key economies. Global economic activity moderated somewhat in the year. Declining energy and food prices together with tight monetary policy have exerted downward pressures on headline inflation. Although major central banks have paused on their policy rate hikes 
due to declining inflation, global financing conditions remain tight as the past effects of the restrictive policies continue to keep borrowing costs high. The global outlook remains uncertain with geopolitical tensions and its potential spillovers to the commodities markets acting as a major risk factor to most economies. On the domestic economy, there are clear indications that the current macroeconomic framework being implemented with the support of the IMF ECF program is yielding positive results. The macroeconomic fundamentals have all trended in the right direction. Both headline and core inflation are declining and projected to decelerate further. Inflation expectations seem well anchored. Fiscal policy implementation is broadly in line with expectations. The current account balance is in surplus and will likely remain so in the near term. Foreign exchange buildup has been strong and should support a stable exchange rate outlook. The benchmark key interest rate indicator, the 91-day Treasury bill rate, also declined over a year in response to macroeconomic conditions. These conditions have fed into sentiments with improvements in business and consumer confidence. Growth, however, remains below potential, requiring policy support, including help from the supply side. In broad terms, the banking sector remains stable, despite the elevated credit risks. Banks' liquidity and profitability positions have improved in the aftermath of the domestic debt restructuring. The bank is closely monitoring the capital restoration efforts of the banks in line with approved plans, including through support from the Ghana Financial Stability Fund. It is expected that early recapitalization and effective risk management by banks will help promote overall banking sector stability and resilience and ensure effective financial intermediation to strengthen the economic recovery efforts. The country's external buffers have increased, providing support for exchange rate stability. Improved forex inflows from the IMF disbursements, receipt of the COCOS indicated loan, and expected funding from the World Bank's development policy operations are all expected to help improve foreign exchange inflows. In addition, the Gold for Reserve program of the bank, repatriation of foreign exchange from mining and oil companies, reduction in debt service payments would further support reserve buildup and improve the external sector outlook. Headline inflation declined sharply by more than 30 percentage points in the course of 2023. Several factors have supported the disinflation process, namely the tight monetary policy stance throughout 2023, favorable international crude oil prices, which led to stable export prices and transportation costs, relative stability in the exchange rate. The latest forecast suggests that the disinflation process will continue, and headline inflation is expected to ease to around 13 to 17 percent by the end of 2024, before gradually trending back to within the medium term target range of 6 to 10 percent by 2025. These forecasts notwithstanding, there are upside rates to the inflation outlook, and there is the need for strict implementation of the 2024 budget and a tight monetary policy stance to sustain the disinflation process. The committee noted the emerging recovery, but sees the need to maintain a strong policy stance to consolidate the disinflation gains. Under these circumstances, the committee decided to reduce the monetary policy rate by 100 basis points to 29%. Thank you. Thank you. It's question time. Uh, respectfully, this is the MPC press briefing, so res the question should be limited, of course, to what I mean, is being said here, as far as the press statement is concerned. So your name and your media house, two questions per media house, 
please let's very brief joshua george we have faith um toma isaac edu and then papi sorry joshua very brief thank you good morning um governor uh, my name is joshua from the business and financial times um my first question has to do with the what has been the impact of the um the policy change regarding the ccr um on the market especially regards to liquidity on the market since that was the goal um of that policy change and um, the second question would be what is the bank's projection given um, regards to the good for reserve this year as well as for um, the good for oil what's the projection this year joshua thank you it's two questions from the uh, george rafi my name is george rafi from uh, joy fm and uh, joy news uh, governor quick one we've done a hundred basis point interesting uh, going through the IMF staff report, they are still expressed concerns that inflation was still high. Now, looking at the challenge of still making sure that we fall in line with the program objectives and also dealing with growth challenges, I mean, still some are saying that the economy is not doing well in terms of growth. Do you think that we should be seeing more cuts to help deal with this challenge? In one breath, you are dealing with meeting the program objectives where they still see inflation as high. In other breath, you also want to stimulate growth. Looking at these two challenges, how is the committee dealing with that challenge of, i.e., being in line with the program objective by still bringing inflation down and also dealing with the concerns that growth remains a big challenge and what can be done to stimulate growth and stimulate lending to businesses. Also, <laughs> Also, I, I'm just asking, I, I stand to be educated. We've, we have not seen the, the impact of these inflows on the Ghana city. Last week, we had some blips on the local currency. What is the situation now? I mean, has the bank got any timelines in terms of when we should be feeling the impact of one this deal inflows from IMF World Bank? Because in other countries, even just the news about clinching a deal, with bilateral creditors saw the currency rallying. So why are we not seeing that impact on the uh, local currency? George, thank you very much. Um, let's be very brief with our preambles. Uh, Toma. Um, good morning, Governor. My name is Toma Emery from the Corporate Guardian magazine. One, we know that we have started making disbursements under the Financial Stability Fund. We would like to know what the terms are for um, financial institutions who are going to take and and um, how much has been dispersed so far. My, uh, my other question is, um, now that we have come to agreement with the external creditors, um, second tranche has come in from the IMF, but we do, don't know, the, we've not been told the exact terms, or we don't know what's on that term sheet. My question is, how will the resumption of coupon payments to our external creditors under the current yet unknown terms of the um, restructuring of external debt affect our gross international reserve build-up. Toma, thank you. Papi, sir. Right. Uh, I guess George and Toma have uh, probably asked, asked all my questions, but I'm just going to do two quick ones. Um, first of all, you talked about the immense benefit of the um, Gold for Oil program. Um, I just wanted to find out, because um, I think in your earlier uh, meetings, you had stated that you were gradually going to phase out uh, the Gold for Oil program. That's um, because it's yielding its desired results. I want to know if we've gotten there yet for us to phase it out. And then, secondly, this just got to my attention um, about the new 50 CD notes that you came up with and the fact that it's raising concerns of counterfeit on the market. Uh, was there a directive um, for banks to discontinue uh, transacting with the old ones? Okay, Marcus, thank you. Sunny, last question. Okay, go ahead. Hello. Yeah, my name is Elam. I report for Economic Times newspaper. Uh, Mr. Governor, you were saying 
your projection for end year inflation is 13.7%, if I heard you right. 13%, sorry, 13%. A rate of 30 to 17%. Thank you. Sorry. I, I just want to know whether the new VAT rate on, let, on domestic electricity consumption was taken into account in your econometric models. Uh, inflation has I mean, consistently dropped for five consecutive times. And, but like my colleague George just said, the city has been depreciating for some time now. If you can explain the metrics for us. Thank you. Okay. A last one for this round. Isaac, very brief. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is Isaac Edu um, with the new finder and Z Multimedia. Um, Doc, I noticed per the data that was shared by the bank, when you look at August and October last year, there seems to be a drop in the debt stock. How uh, are you able to explain that? What's the source of the reduction? Thank you. Thank you, Isaac. Mr. Chairman will take your response. Well, thank you all very much for these very interesting questions. Uh, let me start with the last one, Isaac from New Finder. Uh, I suspect what you're seeing there is the restructuring of the domestic debt that you see in the data. So the decline that you see in, in the drop, what you call the drop in the debt stock, is coming from the domestic debt, including Bank of Ghana's claims on government. As you are aware, we had a 50% haircut on our claims on government. That alone should you know, lead to a significant drop in, in the level of domestic debt. And then to Elam's question on the impact of the BAT on inflation, this is a matter that I have been addressing uh, for the past few weeks. Uh, making the point that we do not expect that to necessarily lead to uh, a, a derailing of our disinflation process uh, to the extent that we maintain a tight monetary policy and also to the extent that it helps in the consolidation of fiscal policy. All of those uh, impacts should dominate rather than the immediate uh, you know, direct effects of the increases in the BAT. Uh, we do not expect that to lead to second round effects of, you know, which would lead to a, 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 a sort of a derailing of the disinflation process that we are seeing. So yes, our modeling team has taken that into consideration. Uh, you would notice that we have given you a range instead of a point target for the year. This is the range for 2024. Uh, at the middle of that range, uh, I think it's about, what, 15. Eh? So you have 15 plus or minus 2%. That plus or minus 2% is to uh, take account of all of these uncertainties that are in the outlook. So that does it for Elon. And Park is yes, sorry, I've never seen you in, in this room. MPC press release before, uh, uh, or at least maybe two years ago or something. You have resumed now. Yeah. The issue of the upgraded uh, CD notes, uh, remember this was done sometime in 2014 or 2015. They had issues with the 50 Ghana CD, and therefore they introduced what they call the upgraded 50 Ghana CDs. So you have the upgraded ones with the cocoa pod, I think, uh, prominently uh, showing, and then the older ones are also in circulation. So there, there are not many of those older ones left, but they are still legal tender. So there, there's not an issue with counterfeiting. Uh, from the data that we have seen, the maybe one or two uh, counterfeit notes in, in 2023 compared to you know, previous times when you could get nearly 30. But the counterfeiting issue is not a major problem. And then you ask the question about the benefits from the gold for oil, which 
we we all sort of appreciate uh, the circumstances under which the gold for oil program was introduced you know uh, almost foreign exchange market that was not functioning well and speculation had taken over the market and the bdcs were speculating on what exchange rate to use you know in their transactions it didn't help with the pricing of oil at the pump at, at the same time this also happened at the time that crude oil prices were very high and therefore, the government intervention to try to manage crude oil prices at the pump came through these government-to-government -government negotiations uh, between the Ghana government and some other suppliers in, in, in the Emirates. And, and then we had already started our Gold for Reserves program. And, you know, this idea of, you know, exchanging gold directly for oil came up. That's how it's all started. Uh, so that was one form of intervention, the butter trade. And then there were also cases where we had to sell the gold and pay for the oil use in the U.S. dollars. So it helped during the crisis to manage that problem. And we have found that as a, a very useful program. The issue is, have we reached the point where we think that the markets have settled, our foreign exchange market is behaving well, and therefore uh, Bank of Ghana could probably you know, focus on its core business of uh, managing inflation. These are the assessments that we are making, and these are the discussions we have had with the fund. Uh, we are evaluating you know, our exposure to the whole program and the risk that it brings to the bank. Uh, and then the bank's board would have to evaluate that report. That report is not yet ready. But once that report is ready, we will take a decision on, on when to exit. And then, Thomas, in his question on disbursement under the uh, Ghana Financial Stability Fund, I understand the terms and conditions are on the Ministry of Finance website, so you can visit the website and you will see the terms and conditions there. So far, 2.5 billion has been disbursed by the Ministry of Finance. 2.5 billion Ghana cities has been disbursed. And then the issue of the agreement on the external creditors. This is where we have to be a little careful because in terms of uh, the disclosures of, of the terms, because we are now going to begin the negotiations with the bondholders. There are issues of comparability of treatment and all of that. So I'm sure at the appropriate time when the negotiations with the bondholders have advanced, I think you would have the opportunity to see the terms of the agreement that was reached by the OCC. So, George Yafi, I, I think that you really don't have a question. Uh, you, you, you are justifying the decisions that the monetary policy has taken, that inflation is still high. We, we haven't totally gotten out of the woods, right? So inflation is still high. At the same time, we are also watching the impact on the growth side, and therefore we are trying to manage two things, uh, looking at sticking to our core mandate of bringing inflation down, and at the same time being mindful of the need to give a little bit of, you know, uh, incentives to the growth side also by the decision to cut uh, the policy rate by 100 basis points. Now, if you look at the ECF program, it was expected that growth will slow. You can't have this very tight fiscal consolidation very tight monetary policy and not have growth slow down. In fact, we are seeing that growth has performed better than originally projected. The original forecast for growth was 1.5%. So we are doing better than we had originally envisaged. And if you look at the path of growth, you see that 
we fully recovered to around 6-7% in 2026. So this is really the outlook for growth. Uh, if you take the ECA program, which I believe you would find in the staff report that has been published, you will see what the path for growth is. And from the data that we have seen as of 2023, we are doing better. And, and this is one of the things we want to stress, that we are seeing a very sharp disinflation, but with very little impact on growth. We are not seeing the negative, you know, expected negative impact on growth. Uh, 2023 ended with a very sharp fall in inflation without any sacrifice on the growth side. So looking at that, I think that uh, if you are to assess performance, we, we are doing very well in terms of the nexus uh, between inflation and growth. Now the impact, on, you're saying you're not seeing the impact on the inflows on the exchange rate, are, are you sure? Uh, since January last year, the city has literally been very fair. I mean, for the 11 months of the year, we saw a depreciation of 7%. So this is not a fixed exchange rate. But if you look at the graph, it appears as if the CD has been fixed, right? But that reflects, you know, some of the improved external sector conditions, the improvement in the current account balance, the improvement in the foreign exchange buffers of the central bank, and, and then the emergence of confidence in the economy, and therefore the currency has remained relatively stable. At least we are not seeing the very high depreciation that you were seeing in 2022. Remember, the currency depreciated by over 50% in 2022. Now this year we are looking at seven. That's the impact of the flows that have come in. Joshua, PNFT, impact of the CRR on liquidity on the market. Yes, that's a good question because <laughs> it appears there's still quite an amount of liquidity on the market. This is one of the issues that we discussed extensively last week. Uh, the auctions are oversubscribed. Uh, they seem to be, the banks have mobilized a lot of deposits, they are very liquid, there are not many uh, avenues for investing their resources, so they are all putting it back on the auction. Uh, the economic conditions have not improved to the extent that the risks associated with lending, you know, are reduced so that they can increase lending, and instead of lending, they are all putting those resources into short-term government bills. So, we are still looking at that, I, I must say. Uh, it's an area that we are uh, still discussing and uh, it, it probably did have an impact, but there's still a lot of liquidity out there. Kinsley Asari, um, Echo, and then Nanawi, Sule. Ghanaian Times. So, following the closure of the international market uh, to government or Ghana, uh, the government has resorted to T bills and other <coughs> instruments to raise money. Uh, of concern is the interest rate offered by the government. I want to ask: Is that a source of concern to the to BUG? Do we see another debt issue bubbling? My second question, um, what, what are the next steps for the ECD following the successful hackathon? And uh, lastly, okay, so how much are questions. they? Uh, sorry. It's related to the second one, or is a different one? Oh, just a small one. 
Okay, no, okay. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> How much is the second tranche of the ECF uh, improving our gross international reserves? If you can. Okay, Kinsley, thank you. Echo. Thank you. Echo, very brief. I'm usually brief. <laughs> um, Governor, 29% um, still makes Ghana the highest gas policy rate on the continent or even among its peers, and thereby making businesses in Ghana most uncompetitive. So if you see that inflation is, is you see this inflation, and thereby you now have an average new forecast of 15%, was there no more scope to cut the rates any deeper or any further than you did? And maybe finally, maybe finally I'll ask, how many companies can borrow at 33%, pay this slew of taxes, pay salaries, and still make profits, and still keep in business? Is there no more scope for maybe a bigger cut, given your new forecast of average 15%? OK, thank, Michael, thank you. Nanoye. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name is Nanoye from Asasi Radio. Governor, the, the government is projecting a single digit inflation next year 2025 with your end of year um, rate at or projection at up to 17 percent do you see the single um, digits being achievable uh, also i have come across a digital bank uh, i want to know how many we have in the system and how they are being regulated to protect depositors thank you thank you norman my name is Norman Akwahifo from Norman Report. Governor, please, what's the latest on the cocoa bills? And um, this is as a result of the fact that we know that you had instructed the banks to halt, you know, selling to individuals. And also, we are also aware that there are some of the people who did not participate in the exchange, um, uh, exchange program. And uh, we don't know if those people have been paid or not. I mean, we want to know what the latest on that particular one is. Okay. No, man, thank you. But I know he, just for you to clarify, digital banks, please clar clarify the question. No, she won't <laughs> I just came across one that, I mean, was, it was highlighted in a, a news report. Uh, it, uh, it's, a, it's a foreign uh, media house that reported that it is thriving in Ghana, so I just wanted to know. Okay. All right, thank you. Sherman, ready for us. This one is a shorter round. Eh? We had only. Uh... So let me start with Suleiman, his placement under the Financial Stability Fund. This is information that we need to probably get from the Ministry of Finance. Uh, I, I know that there are a few banks that have been recapitalized, uh, and some are also. Process. Uh, I'm not sure if I should be talking about individual banks at, at a press briefing of this nature. Governor, we just wanted the number. I mean, we've seen CBG got some money. Well, we so, so you've seen some. Uh, you don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me mention the number. I'm not sure if it's, there's anything to be gained from, from that. But let me broadly tell you that from what we have seen, the current data that we have seen, given the performance of banks in 2023, a lot of the banks will be able to fill the gaps from the profits that they have made in 2023. So the situation is really not, you know, very critical. Uh, I was having this discussion with the uh, deputy governor and the bank supervisor before this meeting that the banks are doing much better than we anticipated. We remember we had given them uh, up to 2026 or so, so, three years to recapitalize. But they are way ahead of, of the recapitalization plans that they have submitted. Uh, most of them have had their annual general meetings where they are getting their shareholders to uh, sort of raise uh, resources. Uh, and therefore, the problem really, I think, has been taken care of. The banks that have got investment will see the 
government also coming in with, with more resources. So Sullivan, I think that rest assured that our banks are very strong and resilient, and we don't foresee any major problems with uh, bank capitalization in the country. Kingsley, your question was on the lack to capital markets and interest rates on the T-bills and whether we are concerned. Uh, I think the T-bills are well aligned with the monetary policy rate, and we expect that you would see the auction markets gradually also following the developments on the inflation side. So if you compare the developments that are beginning to show in the rate of inflation, we expect that to also extend uh, to the treasury bill market. And you will see that uh, treasury bill market rates would also be expected to fall by year end to around this uh, range that we, we have given. And therefore, we don't see any problem you know, with creating a, another debt uh, problem in, in the outlook. On the next steps for the ECD, as you're aware, we have completed with the pilot. We are just uh, at the point where we need to uh, agree on the commercials with the technology providers. Uh, those are not very easy decisions uh, to take. At the same time, we were also focusing more on the macro situation in the country. I'm sure that by the end of this year, if inflation goes where we expect it to go, then the issue of the central bank digital currency will become more important. Hopefully by that time, we would have reached some agreements on the commercial side with the technology partners. My friend from Bloomberg, what's his name again? Echo. Echo. <laughs> Echo. You have to be patient, right? You have to be patient. Forecasts are based or conditioned on policy. That forecast of 13 to 17 percent is conditional on the policies that are carried out today. So the fact that we have forecasted that inflation will be 13.7 to 17 percent probably landed doesn't mean that, therefore, you can just go ahead and cut the rate to 13 or 17 percent. <laughs> that forecast is conditional on the stance of policy that we have today. Okay. So let's make that, that clear. I think that we are all in a hurry. I saw the Chamber of commerce and industry also you know, pushing for very sharp reductions in the policies. They, they should take their time. We will get there. But for us to get there, we have to do the right thing now. And that's why we need to be very cautious about how we transmit these policies into the system. If we allow the policy rate to get this large, we might not attain those forecasts at the end of the year. So that, that's really the, the, the way to deal with the way you put that question on. Couldn't we have gone any deeper? No, we couldn't have. Uh, because we have forecasted that we need to be here. Uh, we need to maintain this level of real rates in order to get to that end year range that you are, we, we, we are projecting. As I see, government projected, I think government's projection is the same as our projection. We are all looking at the same fund projections. These are the fund projections. The single digit, as we said, is for 2026, uh, as read in the press release. The good thing about all of this is that, you know we have a monetary policy consultation clause under the program. That is, we expect inflation to be within a particular range at any point in time. At the end of the year, we're slightly below on the lower end of, of, of the range, uh, which is encouraging for us. It means that 
we, we are on course in terms of the current policy stance. Thank you. Last round. Well, let, I think, yeah, a few, there, one or two also. Yes, yes. The digital bank, I don't know what you call a digital bank, but we don't have a category of license uh, called digital bank. Uh, this is an issue that we are still looking at. But there's a lot of digital activity going on in the banks, uh, all these mobile money, uh, credit, uh, loans that are being given out. These are digital products. So I don't know what definition of digital bank that reporter had in mind, but our banks already have digital products and they don't have digital bank licenses per se. This one was specific. Yeah. Digital yeah. No, no. no. Like, probably. probably right. So we need to clarify that to the public. And then the question from Asari on this cocoa bills, it's a very, very interesting question. Because I thought that all the individual holders of cocoa bills had been sorted out, actually. So I was surprised to hear about the noise that there are individual holders of cocoa bills that, who opted not to participate. I mean, individual holders were really not part of the restructuring of the cocoa bills. So uh, that issue has to be resolved. Uh, I don't think that uh, there is any big debate about that. We said that right from the beginning that originally they should not even have been sold cocoa bills. And therefore we ensured that all individuals were paid. So uh, I was surprised to hear that there are a few out there still that were not sorted out. And we would look at it. Thank you. This is the last round. Um, Maxwell. Maxwell. Um, Joshua, if, if. My second question was on, was on this in regards to the projection and the actual good for reserve as well as the good for oil. Okay. Okay. Noted. Noted. Thank you. Um, Maxwell. Okay. Maxwell, I've been being a writer. Um, Governor, exactly what. Uh, the reasons for seeing the lowering interest rates, if you can allude to them specifically, what, what factors are accounting for the moderate outlook? On the issue of disinflation not impacting growth, or disinflation happening but growth not picking up, wouldn't you say it's a factor of the base effect? The fact that 2022, 2023 in particular, we came from a steep, a high ground. So it, uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, normal the way inflation is. But then you may not necessarily see it impact growth immediately. Then on the issue of, uh, I see that you have a challenge with fiscal side. Exactly what do you want seen done? And then finally, on the banks, some of the banks that still have capital issues, why allow them to create assets? Isn't that increasing the risk? Why allow them to lend to a certain continual lending as if their capital situation is okay? Okay, Maxwell, thank you. Mr. Byron. Okay. All right, my name is Mark Byron from UTV. Mr. Governor, we understand this election year and we understand what, what an election year means to our economy. What are the steps you are putting in place to ensure as managers of the economy we don't get derailed from the structural reforms that we are putting in place with respect to the IMF loans? Thank you. Okay, Mark Byron, thank you. Justice. Um, mine is just a follow-up to the question you answered from um, Kinsley and a call concerning the Kinsley especially concerning the government resorting to the tables. So um, from what I've picked up from you know some concerned analysts is that uh, the rate our policy rate is such is so high that government is borrowing at a very high cost, and then also that is that keeps increasing you know, the government debt. And then it risks, you know, we 
not achieving, you know, that particular um, debt sustainability, we might not meet the timelines for debt sustainability as we, you know, envisage under the IMF program. So uh, what, what is um, your position on that, sir? Thank you. Thank you. Last question. Um, yes, sir. Um, oil prices uh, is now hovering around $84 per barrel due to the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. Um, how does this, if it continues, what are some of the things you are putting in place in terms of it, making sure the inflation uh, projections are within the band of the 13 and 17 percent, close 2024? 20, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joshua, on your question, we will provide the data, we will provide the data after this. Uh, okay. Thank you. A response, thank you. So it's very clear that we really didn't need this third round of questions because they're going right back to these issues that I have already addressed very clearly. Let me go back to the first one. Maxwell, it's as if you were not in this press conference at all. I'm surprised that the questions, going back to the moderate cut, then the issue of growth, and then the issue, I don't know where this issue is coming up on the fiscal side. We don't have any problems with the fiscal side as we speak, right? We had reported that uh, everything seems to be in line with the IMF program. So I'm not sure if we have any problem with the fiscal side. I had even gone to the extent of saying that we think that we didn't see such a sharp disinflation lead to a negative impact on growth. And that we have done much better than we should have done on the growth side. So I, that should take care of the question you're asking about growth not picking up. In our view, growth has done better than it should have. Under the framework, and I mentioned that under the IMF program, the growth projection for 2023 was 1.6. And we are doing even better than projected under the program, we discussed the fact that the growth path really is to get to uh, 5, 6, 7 percent post-2026. So <laughs> the story is not about growth not picking up. The story is about growing, growth doing better than forecasted. And this is what I said, that the, even in the midst of such a large disinflation, we haven't seen the negative impact of that on growth. Then you came back to this issue of why are we allowing banks who have capital problems to lend and still having access to lend. And I'm like, all that we said about there being no problem about bank capital just on the basis of the profits that they have made this year and then on the basis of you know, some of the capital plans that we are seeing. We've talked about all of that. So where is this question from? So really, I, I mean, I think you need to digest <laughs> all the responses that we have given you. And then, if you want, you can come back and we can have a private conversation. <laughs> then, I don't know, on the bank side, we, we are quite comfortable with the uh, capital situation. Uh, we think that the banks will be fine. Uh, even the SDIs, we, we are not too concerned at this stage. Uh, we are quite comfortable with the fiscal performance uh, f so far. Uh, we are quite comfortable with the uh, policy rate size cut because we think that this is what we need to be able to attain the end year targets that we have set for ourselves. And then uh, this goes back to uh, is it the question on election years? Well, I mean, we, we've all signed up to an IMF program. It's not just the Bank of Ghana or the monetary policy side. Uh, this is a program which is both about monetary and fiscal policy, right? So we expect both sides to help to deliver, you know, on, on these targets, irrespective of whether there is an election year or not. And so long as we remain committed to, to the program, then, then we should be fine.
And then justice, going back to all these issues about uh, policy rate, increasing government debt, and risk of not achieving. Don't you think we looked at all of this, despite the explanation that I gave that we think that it's in line, the auction rates are in line with the policy rate, and we need to have patience as inflation goes down and the policy rate adjusts downwards, you find the auction market. We said all these things. So you see my point. I mean, we've said all these things. So this round was really just a repete of things that we have already addressed. <laughs> Thank you. And it felt like we are in the lecture um, hall, actually. How, how the second tranche, what rate the, the 600 million that came in January, I think this is the, the I think it took the gross international reserves to 3.4, 3.4 nearly 3.5 billion, and then the gross reserves at 4.09 million in January. This is the latest January numbers. So the reserve levels at the end of the year, has it been gone up further in January? Okay, okay. Mr. Chairman, thank you. So we are still available to receive your questions. If you have additional questions, kindly send it to communications office at pog.gov.gh. Still questions to us, and we'll provide the detailed responses to all the information that you need so you can be able to write your stories. I want to thank you, uh, the press, for handing our invitation, and um, let's continue to collaborate to ensure that we'll be able to report accurately on all the key issues uh, from this press. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Thank you very much, first and second deputy governors. Thank you, members of the NPC. Thank you very much. For our viewers who join our live broadcast, continue to connect with the bank uh, on our social media platforms and our website, bog.gov.gh. God willing, we'll meet soon. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. And thank you, sir.